Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I decided I would try to recreate the accent wall that is on the wall behind me when I usually film and put it on this wall here. Look at this Wrestlemania going on. Knock it off. So yeah, as you can see, this room is a wreck. It needs a total makeover, um, but I figured I'd start with the painting of the walls, get that done, and then we're going to rip up the carpet, redo the flooring, put in some better furniture, and then decorating. So right now, the color of the room is called Roaring Twenties. It's a bare color. We painted this. A couple months ago, I don't remember exactly when, but the whole room is that bare color and then I'm kind of sad about it, but I'm going to redo this wall. So the first thing I'm going to do is completely paint it white. So I have this huge, I think it's five gallon can of white down here. And then from the last time I painted the bedroom, I have these two colors. These are the dark and light blue that I made the chevron pattern with. So. I think that there's enough here to redo the whole wall. In case anyone is interested, this is a Glidden color called Benton Harbor. And this one's also Glidden and it is Island Morning. So this project is going to be difficult because it is still really hot out and this house has no air conditioning. So I'm going to be working with a fan. I am prepared to sweat. It's early morning. I figured I would do the white coat today, completely cover the wall in white, do the trimming, and then tomorrow I'm going to tape it up with the chevron pattern and start rolling the blues. The first thing that I did was use the white paint to trim out the edges of the walls and the ceiling so that way I wouldn't have to get too close to the edges with the paint roller. I didn't cut in the bottom piece because eventually there's going to be trim there. The next step was to paint the whole wall white. I could have left it with a pink background if I wanted to, but I felt like that color wouldn't look good with the blues that I already owned, and I just really wanted the pattern to pop with the white and dark blue contrast. Between this clip and the next one, I did a second coat of white on the wall, and I also asked my boyfriend to patch a few holes that were no longer needed and we ripped out the carpet in the room to prepare for new flooring. Now it's time to measure the wall to figure out where to mark out and put painter's tape. The first thing I did was measure the length of the wall and then I measured the height. If you already have base trim at the bottom of the wall, I'd say it's best to measure from the ceiling to that point so that way when you divide the wall into sections, the last one ends at the top of the trim. I just think that looks a lot more even and clean. But since I didn't have any trim on the wall, I just subtracted a few inches. So before I begin taping up the wall and painting, I thought it would be a good idea to sit down and draw out what I wanted it to look like and just make sure I was getting all the dimensions right. If you have some grid paper, I think that that helps a lot because then you can make it pretty even. So the first thing I did was draw a box to represent my wall and I wrote out what the width of the wall was that I measured and the height. I decided to split my wall into four pieces vertically and eight pieces horizontally. Depending on what size boxes you want, you can always change that up. You could add another vertical strip or add more horizontal strips. After I drew my wall, I took the length of the wall and I divided it by four and that gave me 29.75 inches. So I just drew the vertical tape strips and marked up 29.75 inches between each one. The next thing I did was take the height of my wall, which is 95 inches, and divided it by 8, which gives me 11.875 inches. That's the distance I'm going to need vertically between each of the slanted pieces of tape. So this is what it looks like after I've sketched it. If you think you might get confused about the colors as you're painting, it also might help to color this in so you know where to put light blue or dark blue or whatever colors you're deciding to use. Now it's time to start taping. Again, since I don't have any base trim, I measured three and a quarter inches from the floor and marked the wall, kind of as like the top of where my tape line should be. This left enough space below it for the future trim and I did this all along the bottom of the wall. For the sides of the room and the ceiling, I just tried my best to follow the creases and keep the lines straight and flat without like any bumps or folds. 
It's really important that the tape is fully secured to the wall so that way the paint doesn't seep through and mess up the design. After I finished taping the exterior box, I started marking the wall vertically every 29.75 inches to add a vertical tape strip. I did the same thing for the last two vertical strips, making sure that from center line to center line they were also 29.75 inches apart. Next I started marking up the vertical tape strips with lines that were 11.875 inches apart and I worked from top to bottom. I did this for all five of the blue tape strips and then I started connecting the lines to make the pattern. Finally, when all the lines were taped up, I started painting with the lighter blue color first and I made sure to do two coats. Then I started painting with the dark blue color, also doing two coats again. There were a couple areas where the roller accidentally went out of the line, so at the end I just had to go back with a paintbrush and touch up a few areas. And finally, the last step was peeling off the painter's tape. And this was so satisfying to do, uh, just to see that for the most part it worked. There were, I think, maybe one or two areas where the paint bled under the tape a little, so I just had to go back and touch that up after. But overall, I think it came out really good, and I'm happy with the results.